I love them and I have forgiven them all. And people say, well, how can you forgive those that, that have wronged you or abused you in your childhood? And I say, how can I not? Because at our core, we are love. That's our essence. Yeah. It's merely that we've just been so conditioned in life to, you know, we're so dogmatized by that belief system in this created paradigm. It's like we've deviated away from our own awareness. And our experiences are not meant to bring us down and kick us even deeper into um, into the abyss, but they're just meant to help elevate our own awareness and to help us understand our experiences and overcome any kind of circumstances. Listen to the vibes. Welcome everyone to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Miss Birgitta Vasser. And she's all the way over in the UK. So um you are a soul empowerment coach. Uh divine channel and light language healer i had to write all that down because i i couldn't remember all that but tell us uh about you first and then about all these things that you do i'll say first hello to you kyle and thanks for having me on the show mm -hmm. all the way well i'm in, in south of london but you're all the way in austin lucky you <laughs> <laughs> the weather is terrible here by the way um, but that's the UK for you. So, um, yeah. So what do you want to know about me exactly? I'm so, an empowerment coach. Yes. I'm a yeah. divine channel and I am a light language healer, which is people are like, what the heck is a light language healer? <laughs> you know, and, and I always have to explain that to people because it's actually the truth is, Carl, it's a, a form of healing that's very much up and coming now. It's very ancient. It's very ancient, but I always say to people, it's like minion language, you know, like mock, mock, uh, banana, para two, right? You don't know what the hell they're saying. But, <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay because your mind doesn't have to comprehend it, but on a soul level, your soul comprehends it and the healing just commences. And it's just, yes, it's like I speak gobbledygook because I, I channel it from woo up there. When they come to me, it's, it's, Remember this, I'm just a tool in the toolbox. And mm -hmm. I say that to everyone. Whether you use the tools and commence to heal yourself, that's entirely up to the individual uh, because they have to use the tools themselves, of course, so to speak. And there's one important aspect that I will always say to people, look, if it does not agree with you, if it doesn't resonate with you, then find something else that does. Mm -hmm. Because there are a million ways you can heal. There are many ways to roam. So, but if it if they love, most people absolutely love it, and they really, it's often that they are stuck in it in in difficult circumstances or in toxic relationships or have um, other sorts of abuse like alcohol abuse. I've seen that, or they're stuck in their fear; they cannot move forward. And I've seen some incredible results with it. Um, I'm happy to give you a demo a little bit later if you like. Oh, I'd love but, that. Yeah, <laughs> it might uh, it might help clear your head too. Well, you know, it's funny because I I have a friend who is a psychic medium. Yeah, and, and I've been getting a lot of uh, messages lately, and it seems like god and, and jesus have i mean just keeps popping up either in conversation or just everyday things that i'm doing and she told me that because of um, my uh my meditation and yep. my prayers because i've been praying a lot lately i got i really got into it and she says you you have messages that are coming to you but You've got a lot of other voices up there that are trying to keep you from getting that message. So yeah. you'd be able to help me with something like that? Yeah, I can help clear that. So and even if I knew to do it afterward, afterwards, I can always do that for you. I'm always happy to help out. Um, but yeah, I've seen some amazing results from people, someone who had, was in a really toxic relationship. And that it also referred to past lives and 
she detached and then she cleared out her whole home literally from room to room she went she decluttered and now she's she's trying to figure out her health and i said it's like a like a puzzle you need to you need to do it step by step and see what works for you when it comes to your when it comes to your health as like, because there's only so much that i can do i don't know i mean i just channel the information and that's it um but she's now commencing she's already, she already made a business plan and so now she's commencing with putting that into motion and um yeah she's very excited about that but i've had people come to me another lady who was so scared of going into hospital because of her heart she had surgery and um i did it for five minutes and she's like do you know what a week later i spoke to her and she said to me Brigitte, do you know what i was i wasn't even thinking about it i just went in and nothing she's like i was just fine how do we go about doing something like that so for me, I mean, my my healing journey was a very, very long one. And I think for many healers, they go through a lot of traumatic experiences. And that is only because that's what we signed up for. Mm -hmm. And so we have to try and figure out how to heal ourselves so that we can in turn help heal, help others heal themselves. So we inspire others to heal themselves. And I think that's really important. Yeah, I didn't come with a cheat sheet. So yeah, of course, from from an early age, I was abused by a friend of the family. And this was back in the 80s. I lost my dad when I was when I just turned 14. Mm. And he suffered from coronary heart disease, but he didn't take his medication. So he thought he could cure himself just because he meditated, which is great to recenter yourself. But he didn't get rid of his trauma, his childhood trauma, because at the age of 15, he was uh, sent to a seminary and uh, he was abused at the, in, in the seminary. Mm. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's terrible. And that's one of the reasons he left home early. But I was also bullied at school because I was super skinny. I was 5'11", super skinny. And I had an immense fear of guys. So I would always find another way to a classroom that I had to get to if there was a guy in the hallway because I had that ingrained fear within me. Mm -hmm. And it just carried on. It carried on. The trauma carried on because I didn't heal. I was a kid. So I, you know, I put it all inside of me. And my parents didn't know. And my mom find that found out when, about the abuse when I was 19, when we were watching an Oprah Winfrey show. And she's like to me and my sister, well, I'm glad you two never got abused. And I stayed quiet. And so it came out. And my mom was just trying to, you know, trying to like, kind of like force it out of me to talk about it. And I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And she also put me in. And backtracking three years at 16, she put me on this modeling course, uh, you know, to try and create my confidence with walking because I was really walking like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> and it was terrible because honestly, Carl, I wanted to be invisible. Um, and so from there, I mean, yeah, I, I got picked up by, by a hairdresser uh, when I did that course and he made me one of the main models and I made like 75 guilders doesn't exist anymore to guilders, but let's say $75 for three days, which was a lot in the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, I had hair till about here and he chopped it into a pixie cut. Well, damn, I felt ugly. Honestly, I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. Oh, no. But I walked the show and, you know the modeling industry is a cattle market it's very superficial yes people do sleep around i didn't i wasn't like that it was just i was very conservative and also dressed very conservative but that was just me in the way that i felt because i was very insecure i had zero confidence mm. and yet i chose the modeling industry and it was often that when I went to castings, because you still had to take your portfolio, and you went in, waited for two hours, they flick through your portfolio, take your comp card, and just go next. And I never got booked. And so I did a lot of other promotional work. And wherever I went, I was bartending and hostessing and just doing stuff off Craigslist at the time. And that was brilliant, brilliant back in the day. But 
I mean, even in the modeling industry, I got assaulted. Mm. And, you know, and that was in New York and it just didn't help me. So everything that I, I just kept carrying with me and it wasn't until, well, of course, I rolled into very dysfunctional relationships. But I take full responsibility for that because that was me. I was attracting broken birth because I was a broken birth myself. And it was like, mm. I wanted to fix them, you know, but I ended up, I kind of ended up hurting them more because I was stumping their own growth as well as my own. Right. So, yeah, I really needed to work on the relationship with myself because honestly, I hated myself so much, Carl. I was... I was really good at suppressing my emotions because I, I worked like a maniac and I could starve myself. And that these were things that I could control. Mm. And it was just the norm for me for so, so many years until finally I kind of hit rock bottom in 2009. And go figure, by that time I was, well, I'm from 1974. So, you know, I was well in my 30s. And that's when I, my ex, he's doing very well, by, by the way, now he's from the US. And uh, he came to live with me in Holland at the time, but he was like a part-time crack addict. So mm. he hadn't alchemized his experiences, his trauma from his own childhood into adulthood. And he landed in bed with the Dutch Crips. And I had never seen someone with crack hands. Mind you, when my stepdad passed away, I had a three-month stint, and this was back in 2000, a stint with drugs, and I nearly killed myself taking God knows how many ecstasy tablets in one night, probably about six or seven, so I suffered memory mm. loss. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. And then I just quit like that from one day to the next. But it was more like a recreational use than not that I wanted to kill myself because I didn't. It was just that my mom had leaned on me for emotional support and I didn't really have anyone. And so I had these group of friends and they did like ecstasy and coke and whatever. And so I decided, well, why not? Because people always wanted to see me with my happy face. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Um, so I could talk about my step that for like one minute and then it was like, oh, yeah, you know, the subject changed. So it, I take full responsibility for it, but I'm still here. But yeah, in 2009, when this was going on and he really, my ex really wanted to get better, but you needed to have a social in Holland, just like that you need in the US. And he didn't have that. So no clinic would take him on. Mm. Uh, which was very disheartening for him. And then eventually he just rolled back into, uh, into you know, the drug scene and he was held for ransom by the Crips because he stole from them. Oh, no. And so I helped, I know, I helped the police in Holland. And so they managed to, they managed to get to him and they deported him on a plane back to the US. Whilst my mom had gotten me out of the, uh, out of Holland in the space of three days. Um, and then this dude, he's, he's in prison now, the, the head of the Crips, but it was the biggest case the prosecution had ever seen. They had to garner evidence for years uh, on this guy. And um, yeah, I mean, the guy called me, threatened my life, and he said, if I ever find you, I'm going to kill you. And if I fi ever find your ex, you will never find him because he'll be dead in a ditch somewhere. Oh, man. I was just like, yeah, and that kind of like, I spiraled. Even though I was in the UK, I, I I spiraled. I took like, and it's really lame, I know that. I took a whole box of ibuprofen, but all that did for me was give me a good night's sleep and get rid of my headache. So <laughs> when I got up the next day, Cal, I was like, you know, I, 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 I need to do something. And my mom said, Brigitte, why didn't you go see a counselor? I did. And all the counselors said to me after listening, after listening to my story, it was like, Brigitte, you're going to be fine. You're strong enough to handle this. I really thought, well, yes, stop this in my head because that wasn't working for me. I mean, how can a counselor say that to you? Mm -hmm. So 
for me, what worked then when I did the research, because I didn't exactly come with like a cheat sheet around my neck, you know, telling me how to heal. Uh, that wasn't the case. So I rolled into the holistic or I followed the holistic route and rolled into Reiki and also, and that was my saving grace, honestly. Uh, it really did wonders for me. And I, I also did level one and two, not in a weekend as they do nowadays, but um, I did level one over the course of six months and then level two for, took me another year. So, and then I started to study a lot of other modalities, healing modalities. I was like this real SpongeBob. <laughs> Well, it's it's funny because there's a lot of things that you said that I can parallel. Yep. Um. When when I finally had my breakdown, I was in my forties. Yeah. And it's it's kind of weird that it happened the way it happened, but I I, I was engaged to this lady. Yeah. And last minute she all of a sudden tells me all these terrible things about me, you know, just two days ago, I was wonderful. Now I'm the devil basically and broke wow. everything off and it left me in confusion. Mm. And then all these memories started flooding in of things that happened to me when I was a kid that I had, I had blocked away and I ended up in a, a mental hospital yeah. and they you know, they have their little sessions. Everybody talks th about their feelings and what happened to yeah. them. And they give you your diagnosis and here, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh man, I'm cured. You know, I didn't realize that a lot of the outbursts that I was having through the years was because I was suffering from PTSD from yeah. what had happened. Mm hmm and then, of course, I I knew I was depressed because I've been fighting depression yeah. since I was, I don't know, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. And I was bullied when I was in school, but I was yeah. the opposite. I was overweight. <laughs> and, I, you know, I went to the therapy. I did everything they told me to do, but yeah. nothing was getting better. And somehow the pills were making it worse. Yeah. And it, I started getting into meditation. Yeah. And let me tell you, people might not think that it works, but I can testify as bad as I was. I couldn't get in a crowd. Nothing like that. Yeah. Because I would get, you know, have an anxiety attack or, you know, my yeah. PTSD would act up. And we took a trip to New York. I meditated like you wouldn't believe and i actually got on the subway and was perfectly fine yeah stopped taking all the medications and i have to stress this i am not a doctor i'm not telling anybody to just stop taking your medicine i weaned myself off of it slowly but i got off all those pills i meditate daily and i yeah. do not have the same problems that i used to now don't get me wrong. I still have my bouts with depression, but they don't last okay. that long. No, no, because you're aware of it. And I think that's beautiful. Meditation is is powerful. And some people think it's like juju. Well, I can't meditate. And you know <laughs> what? Well, I'm sorry. Why don't you just take 20 minutes? And I always say to people, just listen to David G meditations. And they're 20 minutes. And you just plug in your headphones and you follow exactly what he says. And mm -hmm. what it, it's for fear, anxiety, um, you know, being one with the divine. He's got so many of them and he's got a very soothing voice. So that's what I always say for people that are just starting out on that journey. Mm -hmm. Do that. And honestly, when you start the day, <clears throat> when you start the day, with a 20 minute meditation, you'll feel better for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. also being thankful for the things that you yeah. do have in this life. That has changed my attitude quite a bit. Yeah. That's, you, I, I agree. Do you connect with people um, one on one or do you just channel and, and give people advice? How, how does that work? 
So yeah, I I do cha- well. I do channel the many master teachers, the galactics, and all of them up there. I'm a little bit of a bike messenger in that way because I'm Dutch anyway. That's why I say I'm a bike messenger be- between the here and there. But it really depends. So when I do it with my light language healing, it's often that I will get past lives come through, mm-hmm. and that just means that people don't realize, Carl. They hold on to so much. And they don't even realize it. And so when past lives come up, I will explain it to them who they were and what happened to them and then help to release that. I did a past life regression uh, session. And as weird as it sounds, even if you don't believe that it's real, I mean, give it a give it a try. Mm. I went through it, not really expecting anything, yeah. but I came out of it a different person. Yeah, and I I totally understand that. I had reg- regression therapy, and it was, oh, I'm telling you, it shot me to pieces. It really, I was so cold when I came out of it, and I remember that. And it had to do with my ex that was the addict at the time. Um, and it was, I was a man in the Byzantium empire and I was married and I had a little girl and I could describe, I mean, I could, I could see the courtyard and the house and it was like a, it was made out of like, kind of like, I don't know what it was, but like clay. And it was, the inside was really nice. Um, just a lot of wood and a lot of tapestry. And I would often sit at night just you know, by the light of a candle and right, I would do that. But apparently my my daughter was my pride and joy. And my ex in that lifetime was like a blood brother to me. Um, So we weren't like related, but he was a blood brother to me. And um, he was married to his his wife, who's actually his mother in this lifetime. And I'm just, I'm just talking, you know, as I'm, as I'm walking through that regression. And I landed in prison because of my beliefs and I died in prison and apparently I was um, I was knifed in my neck and it's very funny because I have little cat paws as, as a birthmark here and so he said to me do you now see the similarities I'm like no not really and then it hit me I'm like yeah so I did time in I did my time or my stint in prison there and he did it in this lifetime. I mean, he's out now and he's working and he's doing very well for himself. But I will say one thing about everyone that's been in my life. Um, and they've all been beautiful reflections. They've all been beautiful teachers and I love them and I have forgiven them all. And people say, well, how can you forgive those that, that have wronged you or abused you in your childhood? And I say, how can I not? Because at our core, we are love. That's our essence. It's merely that we've just been so conditioned in life to, you know, we're so dogmatized by that belief system in this creative paradigm. It's like we've deviated away from our own awareness. And our experiences are not meant to bring us down and kick us even deeper into um, into the abyss, but they're just meant to help elevate our own awareness and to help us understand our experiences and overcome any kind of circumstances. Well, I, I know there's somebody out there that's watching this thinking this is a bunch of mumbo jumbo and, you know, it's all in our heads. Hey, you know what? Even if it I'm is, true. even if it is, <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you, going through a, a, a hypnotic session, yeah, it it definitely changed me, and yeah. I, I I recommend you at least try it. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but try it. Yeah, but it you know it changes the energy, and again, it doesn't matter what type of healing you choose, as long as it works for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've walked through the Akashic records. Um, the Akashic records as well. So that's a, that's another type of healing where you sit with the healer and you walk through your past lives 
And I did that with a nut because I hit nut. That wasn't the only time I hit rock bottom. <laughs> I had to go through what you call the dark night of soul again uh, back in like 2016. But that was with somebody who couldn't let me go. He had such a fear of losing me and he lost his mom. He fell into depression. He had a reckless and he was just so controlling, so needy. And I was trying to help him out, trying to get him a job, everything. You know, I went to the ends of the earth for them because I didn't want to I didn't want to see them suffer and but you know at the end of the day I was the one that suffered and I was the the one you know I hurt myself because of what I did and but that was so powerful because as well you go through these past lives and the energy just changes it changes for you, but it also changes that for the other person. Mm-hmm. Do you have to have someone right there with you, or can you do sessions over like Zoom or streaming? For me, yard? I can do it over. Yeah, I can do them over Zoom or streaming. Yeah. Oh wow! Um, where would someone go to use your services? Uh, they can go to my website, powersoulhealing.com. Uh, I'm on YouTube as well. Um, I do. Oh, I've done. In, I used to do interviews, but uh, I also do my light language channeling. Um, that's just me, just giving back, you know. And those that listen to it, I hope that it just helps them, you know, move forward with their own life. But that's on the Power Soul Healing as well. And then I'm on Instagram and Facebook on the Universal Light Warriors. But I must say, admittedly, say I'm not the biggest social media buff. It's just. Again, that just it just deviates people away from their awareness. You know, it's just like, oh, we're so focused on the screen. Whereas in the <laughs> 1980s, for instance, it was all about, hey, we're gonna play outside with the kids, and we only had a, had a landline, and we used to call up and say, oh, can I play with so and so? Oh, can I go? Can I go biking? Can I play marbles? You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, we used to do that. Now it's everyone's on their phone or. Or in the trains, everyone's, again, on their phones, or they've got their laptop out, or their Kindle, you name it. And everyone's so absorbed yeah. within themselves that they've forgotten that heart-to-heart communication. It's, poof, disappeared. I, I do social media every once in a while. I used to do it on a daily basis, thinking, oh, if I don't put this post up, the world's uh. going to come to an end. I- <laughs> you know? And it really didn't make much of a difference. You know, my videos, they got the same amount of attention, whether I posted it on Facebook or Instagram as, as if I just didn't do it at all. So uh, I'll go check it every once in a while. It must be frustrating to some people because I'll get on there and I'll see there's 30 or 40 people wanting to connect and <laughs> I haven't done it. <laughs> That's all right. Mm. Well, I do spend a little bit of time on LinkedIn though, because that seems really to be a little more serious. And you know, I I meet people that either come on the show or I go on their show, that kind of thing. So and it it yeah. it does have a purpose. But you know, you're correct. If it doesn't really give you value, don't put your effort into it or don't let it consume you. Yeah. And you hit that. You hit. You hit the nail on the head. It's people seeking value, whereas, you know, love yourself, respect yourself, and just embrace yourself. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter. It, I, this is also very, it's very key. It doesn't matter what other people think of you. It really matters what you think of you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think, and, I was going to yeah. say, I, th- I think that we have created a world of narcissists with all this TikTok and Instagram oh, yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> I do not understand the purpose of TikTok, but uh, okay. Even on holiday, when you go to a restaurant, um, well, people are sitting, having dinner with their phones. Why? Mm-hmm. You have a yeah, human being yeah. in front of you. Yes. Exactly. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I'm I'm looking forward to doing a session with you. And I, I think we should record it. Yeah, we can record it. Absolutely. And if it helps others as well, that's that's great too. Well, I'm mm. looking forward to it. And 
I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome. You've been coming in. You've been liking the videos and commenting and, and sharing it. Continue to do so because without you, I just wouldn't be able to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to, to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.